The digital signature is a mandatory technique when we want to ensure the authenticity of a message. It means when we want to know if the message was really created by the person that has said that is the author of this message. So for this purpose, there is some algorithms such as the DSA, the Digital Signature Algorithm. And this technique is based in the asynchronous encryptation, where we have a public key and a private key, in which the rules are the author of the information, or any user that's able to create information in the system, use, utilize the private key, its own private key, to sign the message, and then the public key is utilized by another user to make sure the information was created by the user that has signed that. So, each user of this environment needs to have a key pair, a private and a public key together. Knowing that, let's see how Python can help us implementing algorithms for this purpose. In this web page, using this library here, we have an, one example of code that provides this the execution of this algorithm. And it's separated in three steps here. The first step is the generation of the key pair, where a private and a public key is created. They are created together because these two keys are very related. And then the second step is when we sign the message. Here, the message is signed. And the last step is where we take the signed message, we take the public key, and after taking two information, we verify if the message was the original message and created by the author that has signed that. Okay, but this code here, it runs at once. But actually, when we work with digital signatures, this step happens in different moments. For instance, the generation of a, a key pair is generated normally when the user is created in the in the system because each user needs to have a private a private private and a public key to be able to generate information with authenticity okay so this step just once per user so it don't need to be executed every time the second step for sign one message okay we need that every time we are going to send the information to be verified by another and every time we create some information that cannot be modified in the future and we want to ensure we are the authors of the message, this message. And the last step could be executed several times. Uh, every time um, the authenticity of your message needs to be verified or not. Okay, um, and here in the, this implementation, some variables like the keys that are generated here are also utilized some, some points below, like here, and, and also the, the message that was created in the second step is utilized here. So what I have done to help you, I have then introduced here one another algorithm based on this one, in which the three steps can run independently, and then you can take this code as basis for, for the implementation of this technique in your system. Okay, so here in the first block, we have the generation of the key pair. We could execute that just once. Okay, here we actually are going to sign the message and then the signature, instead of being a variable, we need to store the signature in the database in a file like here in my example. So we store, when we generated the key pair here, we create one file for the book key we create one file for the private key, so both information could be read in the future. Then when we sign the message, we write the signature in a file as well. And then the third, third step could run independently. Then here we can recover the public key, we can recover the signature uh, of the um, that was performed, and then verify if the, the original message is valid or not. And if the authenticity is valid or not. So here, let's execute this code, and then we are going to understand 
the, the, the outputs and the step by step that are generated here. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, it was executed. Now let's take a look here. First of all, we have defined the constants here for the name of the files that was created, the private key and the public key. This method generate, generates both keys together. This variable key contains both, key, both keys. Here we extract the public key and here we extract the private key. And then we have here files named public key. That's here. This is the public key that was generated. And here we have a private key. So here we have the private key, both keys were generated together. Okay. And then once we have the two keys, we have then one message. Here the message is the final, but it's not a string. It's a binary content. So it could be files. It could be PDF files, Excel files, or any other kind of content you want to encrypt and to sign. Okay. So we take this message and then we using the private key of the author, just the author has to have access to the private key. The author then takes its private key and then sign the hash of the original message. We don't sign the entire message, just its hash. So we generate the hash of the message and we sign the message, okay? The hash of the message is because we don't need to sign the entire message because it will be a heavy process and the, and the um, result will be the same, okay? Right. Then, after we sign that, we save the signature in a file, but the signature is just a binary content. We cannot read that properly, but it's, it's saved here in the signature file, okay? So here, here just a binary content that represents the signature, right? Then we have the third step. The third step, we take the, the public key again because the public key is available for our user in the environment. So they take the public key of the user that has said that was the author. It takes the original message and generates the hash again of this message. Then once taking the, the public key, once taking the, the signature, it's then created a verifier object with this digital, digital signature object. And then we call the verify method, which try to match the hash of the original message and the signature that was produced. And then if this information match, it says the message is authentic. Otherwise, it's not authentic, but in this case it is. But now let's validate it really works. Let's do the following. Let's um, comment this first two blocks of code, we don't need to generate the key pair, and you don't need to sign again the message because we already have the signature here, okay? We already have the signature. So what we are going to do, if we change some character here, just if I, if I could put here some kind of a dot, for instance, and save, and now execute again the algorithm, let's see the output that's going to be produced. You see here, the message is not authentic because it tries to generate the hash of this message, at this point um, here, but then the information not met. So now if we take out this change here, we take out the dot, so the message is again as it was originally, and run that again, we then have the message authentic again. Okay, hope you have understood the overall idea of the GSA, and it could help you in your purpose. Thank you for watching.